Okay, welcome back to part two of correct referencing style. Um, this section will deal with uh, the mechanics of using Microsoft Word to to make our referencing happen in the simplest possible way that we can, given the limitations I mentioned in part one. All right, so let's begin here um, by looking at the the ribbon which we see above us in Microsoft Word 2010. I've clicked on the reference tab and the references tab opens up a whole bunch of different options for us. We're going to concentrate primarily on um, citations and um, bibliography. So really this section over here. Okay, seeing as we're, we're dealing with um, with APA style, um, if I were I dealing with Chicago style I would use footnotes instead. Okay, so let's have a look for a start at how Microsoft Word organizes itself. Now this box here which is called insert citation brings up a drop down menu when you click on the little arrow and the drop down menu has um, a bunch of of possibilities that you can use to cite so it's got like a short list of different um, sources that it knows that you've entered into it and it's ready to use those in your citation now you can't cite anything that is not in this list and as it happens when you start a document you'll need to begin this list so let's um let's look at how we do that how do we add sources to this list so we can cite from them all right so to do that there's two ways you notice down the bottom here you can add a new source or you can also go to manage sources so if i click on manage sources um this window opens up and it gives you a little bit of an overview of what's happening in your your own personal library and in your personal library on the left hand side is the master list of all the documents that you've for which you've entered information into MS Word and on the right hand side is the list of documents which you're using in your actual text that you're writing at this point in time now you notice I've got four documents over here that's probably four out of you know, probably several hundred documents on the left hand side now um, to add a new document into here and let's just suppose um, I just need to click on new and if I click on new um, this little I call it like a library card opens up and the library card really it's a cue for you to enter in the information about the source so that MS Word can keep it on file and then you can cite from it accurately and MS, will build, MS Word will build your bibliography for you your bibliography for you on the basis of this information so this is the hard work this is the hard yards that you have to do in order to enjoy the benefits of just click and bouncing away and enjoying the beautiful flow of references without having to type each every single one out so for you people who are just used to copying and pasting URLs at the bottom this will seem onerous and difficult and tedious um, it will at the beginning but it is much better than to write a whole essay and be then found to be plagiarizing and get zero. So I suggest that you get in the habit, you get quick at it after a while, and you build up a library. And that library can be used in any subject at any time. So I encourage you to start getting in the habit of doing this. All right now notice at the top of this box you're asked to determine what sort of information it is that you're going to be using. Is it a book? Is it a journal article? Is it um, a website? Is it a report? So you're going to have to decide what kind of, what style of, of information it is. It's miscellaneous down the bottom if it's something that you can't work out. So choose and in this case let's say oh, I'm going to use a website and it then asks me what's the author of the website, the name of the website, website page and so forth. If I want to know all the necessary fields to compile a bibliography, I have to check this little box down here, show all bibliography fields. If I do that, a red asterisk indicates all the fields that I have to fill in in order to get the correct information that's required for uh, a bibliography in APA style. So let's just say I'm going to do that and I need to find a website. Now it so happens that I'll use a website that I've already used um, in my document just to show you. So we'll enter a second, a double entry for the sake of illustration purposes. Now this is a, a good website to use because it's rather difficult to work out what's going on here and this is often the case in websites. Um, we're asked what is the web page um, and web website. Now, the difference being that the website is the, the probably the, the mothership here, the information, the, the name of the people who are organizing the whole thing. In this case it's book rags and that would be the website. The web page, well it's rather difficult to see it immediate at first sight. It could be called Thomas Midgley Jr. Biography. But a bit of closer inspection shows that there's a, a quote here now from 
a mob called the World of Chemistry and it seems to indicate that there's uh, some text here and if you want to read more it takes you to a page where you have to buy the rest of the article but we don't want it we've just read this we're going to quote from here so really um, although the web page is book rags sorry the website is book rags web page is a quote from world of chemistry and fair enough down the bottom further as we keep on going down we get to the nitty-gritty web chemistry um, world of chemistry I beg your pardon uh, the article is written by Thomas Gale and he's part of the Thompson Corporation, Corporation copyright 2005-2006. So when we come to filling in the details here um, in our little library card, uh, which I'll dig up in a minute, it should be sitting around here somewhere. Uh, is it there? Looks like it might be here. Okay. The author was Thomas Gale. Um, the name of the web page, remember that it was um, Thomas Midgley Jr. And the name of the website was Book Rags. Okay, things like the year of, um, of publication, uh, well, we decided it was going to be 2005 to 2006. That was the information that was there. We don't know the month of the day, we just put in A stands for not applicable so we, we just can't we just don't have that information that's often the case in websites you just don't have it all there um, we need to know the URL now to find out the URL it's not too difficult to do that it's one of the easiest things top left hand side if you just left click there it'll highlight the URL which is a location on the web copy it and um, take it into your document and paste it under the URL by left clicking and paste or using control V whichever suits you. Alright now we've filled in that information that wasn't that bad was it? Okay. One more thing that we might be good to put in there and that is that the day the year we access this which is 2013 the month which is February and the date that we accessed is the third. So if we enter all that information and click OK now um, we can see that our list has grown by one more reference Thomas Gale, um, Thomas, Mid or Thomas Midgley Jr. so forth. So we're ready to use this now. So if we click um, close here now, oh, just before we do, down the bottom here you get a quick preview. It's APA 6 edition is the style that we're using. The citation will look like that when we put it in the text and the bibliogra bibliographic entry will look like this. Okay. Now down here let's just say we want to put it in there I'm deciding I'm gonna use this reference over here now I've already done the reference I'm gonna delete this reference and I'm gonna add the new one in just so you see if we go to insert citation now I left click on this amongst my references we now have two references to Thomas Gale because I added the second one in I'm gonna use my new references just by left clicking and straight away it puts in the reference just as I require it now in the case of a book that reference will go in. You may have to add in the actual page number because we didn't fill in the page number in the library card. So to do that, just right click and amongst the options you'll see edit citation, left click that and you could enter in the page number if it's a book and then click OK and we're good to go and you'll end up with the page number. Alrighty then, now we've covered um, entering the information to build up your library, we've covered pushing in a citation into your text um, it might be good um, now just to look at putting in a bibliography at the end. You must include a bibliography. It's an essential part of your, your document. Without it, your document fails. So here's the bibliography. Just put in a title and then let's suppose that it's blank. I'm going to get rid of all this and we want to put in a bibliography. It's a simple matter then of selecting bibliography under the citations in bibliography uh, section of the ribbon and go right down to the bottom it says insert bibliography and there it is in alphabetical order in beautiful APA style the same process if you're using one of the other styles insert the bibliography in just that manner so now you have a complete document it's fully referenced and it should um, it should satisfy uh, the most discerning of examiners and readers and it, it does justice to the people who you've used and it gives you a sense of security that you know that you've uh, you've been you've been accurate and you've been honest in your quotation and your use of other people's sources and intellectual property.
Okay, so I hope that makes it clear for you how to use Word. Um, please do it, use it, it gets quick, you become quick and familiar with it the more that you use it and you build that library and that library is great to have as a reference system. Thank you for listening.